Hey there guys, my name's Earth to Lydia. Today's a little bit of a different kind of video. Rather than news or anything, I'm here to share some advice which might be useful, especially to newer killers. Yesterday I uploaded a video where I went against a group of survivors who had a key and I managed to 4k with 11 hooks at 5 gens still at the end of the game. I actually asked in that video how you guys counter keys and I just wanted to feed back on some of the responses. So a lot of you actually said that when you see a key in your lobby, you'll either bring a Mori or you'll tunnel the person with the key out of the game and I actually think that generally speaking this is a really bad idea. First of all for the newer players I'm going to go over the key and hatch mechanics and what they do. So survivors have two ways of escaping the trial. The first is through the exit gates after five gens are completed or there is a hatch that'll spawn after a lesser amount of gens have been completed. Once the hatch spawns it will either open when only one survivor is left in the match or when opened by a skeleton or dull key. For the hatch to spawn in the map you need to complete a number of gens equal to the amount of survivors left in the trial plus one. So so if there are four survivors left then they need to complete all five gens, for three left they need to complete four and for two survivors left they will need to complete three. Now here are the two big problems with tunneling and mooring key users. Firstly the key stays in the map. So if you're against some survivors that are on comms, it's really not that hard for another one of them to find the first survivor's death hook and go and grab the key for themselves. And secondly, if anything, you're actually making the key stronger. As I mentioned earlier, the less survivors that are in the game, the less gens they need to complete to get the hatch to spawn. Yes, in the early game, Amori can give you a slight advantage by adding more pressure on the remaining survivors, but if you don't kill that survivor really quickly, then you're giving the remaining survivors more time and generators, which will ultimately help them with the hatch spawning. So what do we do instead to counter this. Actually, you do the exact opposite of tunneling. Make sure to rotate the survivors as much as possible and if one's on death hook then you can slug them and go for another one. Slugging I actually find really really helpful to add map pressure. It forces the other survivors to go in to try and revive their teammate from the floor and it can draw them to you as well. Also if you can interrupt them healing it keeps your pressure up as well as they'll be easier to down. And after a certain amount of hook stages a lot of survivors will want to heal as much as possible which makes them a sitting duck. Also, if they just see a lot of people getting slugged, they'll want to heal too. And lastly, don't underestimate the power of Franklin's demise. I've been using this every time that I see somebody in my lobby with a key, and I've not actually had a key hatch escape in quite literally months. It's easy for a survivor to find a larger item like a toolbox or a medkit in game, because the models for these items are a lot easier to see. For keys, the model is a lot smaller, so particularly on large or grassy maps, it's going to be really difficult for them to find once they've already dropped it. Even for an organized bunch of survivors. Honestly, Franklin's is so much better at countering keys than you'd initially give it credit for. Also, it makes the key despawn after a certain amount of time if the survivors haven't gone back and picked it up. And once that's out the way, you can basically play the game as normal. Anyway, that's been it from me today. If you found this useful, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. As always, my socials, including the link to my Discord, are in the description box. And thank you all for making it this far in. Take care.